Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, I've got an interesting little problem that I'm going to try to solve. In this space here, which is getting started in Oxygen Not Included, I have a unique problem, at least to me and the way I've been playing the game recently, and that is that I have no access to a cold biome. So when it comes to dealing with heat and deleting heat, I kind of need to rely on something besides a wheeze work. Normally, I just dig over and find a wheeze work, but right now, um... It would be a long dig to get to anything like that. So, I was thinking, where could I delete some heat? And you know what? We just did this whole series on creating liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen by using either a thermal regulator or an aqua tuner. So let's use that same sort of concepts that we learned there, but combine it with our toilets to literally flush our heat away. All right, so let's take a look at what's going on here. I have several duplicants taking a shower right now. Now, the temperature that's coming out of the shower reflects the temperature that's going into the shower. So in this case, the inlet temperature here is at 24 degrees Celsius. Now you can run that temperature all the way up to like 90 something degrees Celsius, so long as it doesn't turn into steam and it will run just fine. The one thing I would say is that you will want to make these out of insulated pipes because otherwise it's going to radiate a lot of heat. The other thing to keep in mind is that that also applies even if you're not filling it with hot water to begin with. The reason is because the temperature that comes out of this water sieve is going to be at a controlled temperature. At least that's the way it is in the current game and it's been that way for a while now. Look at this. Look at this. It's coming out at 40 degrees Celsius. So boom, right there, if we go from a high temperature to a low temperature, we're able to delete a tremendous amount of heat. So using something that we already have to use inside of our base, which is going to be bathrooms, sinks, showers, we should be able to temperature control just about anything we want, so long as we set up the loop just right. So let's take that heat and flush it down the drain. All right, so here's what I got going on. I got three showers, three lavatories, and three sinks for three duplicates. And this is just gonna run through a real simple loop. Now to make this work, all you have to do is set up essentially a water sieve down here and they're just it's just gonna recycle over and over again, not a big deal. So long as you account for the overflow, that should pretty much just run continuous, uninterrupted. So down here, I'm just gonna go ahead and set up my water sieve. Now, as far as the plumbing is concerned, we're just using, in this case, insulated igneous rock and we're just going to use the inlet and the outlet. So here's what I wanna do. Just to make this nice and small, what I'm going to do is bring this down. I'm gonna put our sieve right down here. So we're going to go in there. We're also gonna to try to run this off of a very small amount of power. So we'll see how all this works. Okay, so I got my water sieve and it's going to go from this loop and it's gonna go into the sieve, but it's going to come out of the sieve over here. So when it comes out of the sieve, I know how hot that pipe is going to be. So what I want to do is using the outlet, I wanna be able to trap that water uh, for a little while so that I can use it to keep the thermal regulator cool because it's going to be running around actually trying to cool things down. So it will be pumping the heat from wherever it's going out to the air around it. So since this is going to be an area that might be a little extra hot, I'm gonna go ahead and put it inside some uh, of an insulated tile area, but I'm just gonna use igneous rock, so it's real simple. So inside of here will live a thermal regulator. I'm just gonna to try to give it a little extra space. Now, if we put two insulated tiles right next to each other, that should do a really good job of keeping the heat because trying to go through two insulated blocks is, is tough. So let's say we try to build it inside of there. We build a door here and then build it inside and then we just block it up with insulated tile afterwards. So positioned on, let's say a couple of airflow tiles is our thermal regulator. And since we don't have a high pressure pump at this point, let's say we go ahead and just pump this in or we brush in some hydrogen up to two kilograms but it has to uh, displace some of the oxygen that's in there. So we kind of have a mixed gas environment. So it looks something like that. So there's a bit of oxygen, maybe carbon dioxide or whatever down there, and then some hydrogen around it as well. Looking at the science real quick. When do we get temperature shift plates? Actually, we get temperature shift plates early on. It's only the third row in. 
So at this point, we could actually make iron temperature shift plates. We could also make it out of copper because we have that available to us. Maybe even some gold amalgam if we dig that up. Let's just take a look here at copper versus iron, see which one's actually worth it. Okay, you have a 0.49 heat capacity with thermal conductivity of 55. That was iron, but the copper is actually a little bit higher thermal conductivity, but a lower specific heat capacity. And since it's 800 kilograms, I think iron's gonna be the way you really wanna go. So I'm going to place one there and one there, and that should be doable. Probably overkill, but is what it is. Okay, so what can I make pipe out of here? We're not gonna be using radiant pipes at this point. Although you could, you could research it. Radiant pipes are not that far up on the research tree. I mean, they're, they're right over here. But let's see if it works without radiant pipes. So using an insulated pipe to go in, just going to go in here like that, and then I'm just gonna use granite. So that's about as good as I'm gonna get early on as far as uh, thermal transfer is concerned. I can get one more pipe right there, so let me just go ahead and take care of that. Clear floor. Okay, so granite, and we're just gonna loop this back and forth. So this is going to be where we build up uh, our heat. So it's 40 in, we'll see what kind of temperatures we actually get on the way out. All right, as far as early stuff that we can build the thermal regulator out of, gold amalgam is gonna be as good as we're gonna get for right now. Although I could see why you might wanna do it out of something like iron, because it, it would protect your pipes from blowing up. <laughs> if, your, if your thermal regulator just destroyed itself before it turned everything into steam. But you should be flushing and, and washing your hands quite a bit, so this should continue to clear out. All right, so now we have an insulated pipe, and we're just going to go back in, and we're going to feed it to the sink. So that's the loop. Now we need to have an overflow figured out. So for that, I'm just going to use a, a liquid bridge. We're just going to work with the same materials here. Igneous rock. And then using an insulated pipe, because it's probably going to be a little hot now. I'm going to go ahead and let it flow out. Or if I wanted to, I could use, well, I mean, you could, you could, could you run the overflow? I think in this case, it would be better to have the overflow over here. Wait a minute. Where do I want that overflow? No, I don't want it there. It'd have to be before this so that I always have that full of liquid. Mmm, okay, yep. So right here would be a good spot for it. You can also do it on the on this side too and actually just, let's say, run it off to a fertilizer maker or something like that. Fertilizer synthesizer. Gotta get the right names right. <laughs> but um, yeah, something like that. Anyhow, the point is putting the loop out before I'm going to do my thermal transfer over here. Yeah, that'll work pretty good. It'll work better. And because I just don't want it to run all over the place, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it inside of a liquid tank. So what should we try to keep cool with the thermal regulator? Well, probably what we were trying to make there, which is an electrolyzer. Oh. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Let's see here. I need kind of a static test for the electrolyzer. Okay, so now I'm going to use something kind of interesting over here. I'm going to use a void, two voids, so that when I run my electrolyzer test, uh, I should be able to see, one, how much heat it's putting out, and it should not overflow. So I should be able to get kind of a comparison, one that's cooled compared to one that isn't cooled. All right, so here's what's up. This one's running. We got a little bit of hydrogen. We got a little bit of oxygen. It's just going to run real quick. And we got some voids down there, so it's just going to flow out. But what I want to see is how hot it. Look at how hot that. Oh, that's so hot. Look at that. 60 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees. That's some hot oxygen. See what I was talking about? Electrolyzers, man, they're, they're going to heat up your base. You got to be careful of that. So here's our solution. Okay, so we got some pipes. And what I want to do is I want to cool one of these electrolyzers down as it's producing its oxygen. So I really only care about everything from the electrolyzer down because that's where its oxygen is going to be. Most people that are doing the electrolyzer setups let the hydrogen and we just capture it and then we run it off to a generator so it doesn't care about the, the that energy gets deleted regardless. 
So once again, just using granite, I'm not using anything too fancy. We're just going to use granite. I'm going to do this little loop, just a small little loop. Let's call it a happy little loop. Can that thing be flipped? Ooh, yeah, it can. Flip that around. Bring that in like so. Bring this one out. Run it over. Ha ha. All right, so check this out. You actually get the gas pipe thermal sensor with the, th the thermal regulator. Ha ha. Okay, so what that means is if I use the gas pipe thermal sensor, I'm trying to figure out where it's going. The loop goes in, goes in, comes out. And then let's say I just run an automation wire from wherever it is back to here. I could just disable this thing based on what temperature it's running at. So I don't like overcool everything that's coming out of here and freeze my base or your farm or whatever. Now another thing we'll have access to because it was really close by is some hydrogen. Probably won't worry about generating it. Although you do have hydrogen here, you also will have hydrogen that I'll be able to dig into. So it's pretty simple to get my hands on some hydrogen. And that's going to be three. So this should be like 55 degrees, right? Ah, 61. Eh, I'm getting closer. <laughs> All right, so we throw a gas pump in there. Not a big deal. And then we just have this have a, it's going to just be a priming loop. So I'll just put a gas valve next to that. And then we'll just run a gas bridge to this, like like so. So there we go. Now I can prime it up. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and spawn in some dupes here and get this experiment, experiment started. Oh, I guess I got to add some power real quick. Let's just do that. We're just going to throw it down. Boom. Okay, there we go. A little bit more power, actually. And then we're going to spawn in some dupes. All right. So spawner. Let's see who we're going to get here. No. Duplicates. All right. One, two, three. Hello. Welcome to the base. All righty. So here we go. I got my three little dupes here. We're running some power. Oop, I'm going to need some sand. Make sure I get that all set up. Sand. We're going to bury. I merc three, three. Sorry, buddy. No. Oh, dig yourself out. All right. There we go. We got some sand. Voila. Oh, Jacob. Darn it. Why are you so flatulent, bro? So this is going to be active if it is above, let's say, 20 degrees. So if it's above 20 degrees, that thing's going to be running. And I'm going to try to delete the heat out of it. So you can see the inlet temperature there. There's that 40-something, and it's leaving at 30-something. By the time it gets over here, it's actually rapidly going up in temperature. So even though this is just granite, it's working out just fine. It's actually being able to transfer plenty of thermal energy. So if we take a look at the heat that this thing's giving off, well... I got to clear that out of there, but you can see it's not going up any too fast. Now, I have to prime this, and what I want to do is take the liquid that I'm going to run into this and actually enter it into the system after um, this radiator loop right there. Because if it's going to come in at 90-something degrees, we don't want it to... You know, we don't want this to potentially be above 100 degrees Celsius and then cause those pipes to burst. Although that well, might be slightly unlikely, but um, just to be careful. So there goes some water, and it's filling up the bathrooms, the sinks, everything up there. All right, so we saw this first flush. <laughs> we saw the first flush. It came out at 90 degrees Celsius, um, and now it's going back through the loop here at 40 degrees and the temperature inside of this area, the, the hydrogen inside of there is right around 40 degrees. So everything is right around 40 degrees, not a big deal. It's gonna take a little while to heat up with the temperature shift plate in there. That may not even be necessary, but it's there for right now. Here comes some more polluted water, which means we're going to delete yet more heat. And, oh, okay, so here's a good number. We can finally get some numbers here. If we figure out each one of these is four kilograms of water, so that shower Oh, no, that's a five and a four, so that's nine each. 43 kilograms divided by three. Really? So each one's using a little bit more than 14 kilograms. Let's just go ahead and go with 14. So that's 14 kilograms per shower. So we can figure out the DTUs from the inlet temperature to the outlet temperature and work that. 
I'm gonna make these like you would normally run them to the left or right. Well, actually, you can just have them wash their hands all the time. They delete even more heat. I mean, at the cost of using sand. Like, we don't have enough sand as is, but... Let's take a look at some temperatures here. So the one over here on the right, look at that. Whoa, 70 degrees. That's some hot oxygen right there. This one, however, is 46 degrees Celsius. Hmm. And we can see the thermal regulators turning on and off a little bit. So I might want to run that lower. Let's say 10 degrees. So if I can bring it down to 26. Ooh, here we go, flush time. I've never been so excited about... <laughs> Once again, here I am, finding myself counting the amount of piss a duplicate puts into a base. How many times have I been here? I feel like everything in my life comes back to the toilet. <laughs> I mean, it does. It does. Worked as a janitor to get through college. Worked for a company that makes equipment for toilet paper. And now I'm working for you guys, counting the amount of piss a duplicate puts out. It's like a whole, well, it's like a whole cycle, isn't it? All right. While I'm questioning my life choices, let's count this up. One, two. Okay, so that was nine times five kilograms each. And then plus a really awkward number, which was 3333.3. Three, 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 three. <laughs> so 48.3, repeating, kilograms of water. So we divide that out by three. 16 kilograms per flush. They're actually like, that, that's a pretty efficient shower when you stop to think about it. Compared to a really inefficient flush. <laughs> Of course, we could also read that. How did I come out with 16.1 when it should say that it's 11.7? Look at that. So there's an inlet of 5, but it comes out as 11.7. Did I count something wrong? No. No, I didn't. That's just the number. Do I got I to gotta dupe with like a big bladder or something? Mm, loud sleeper. Farts a lot. Doesn't really breathe much. Loud sleeper. Ugly crier. No. All right. So while my numbers are different than apparently the number should be in the game, that's good to know. Moving on. Oh, you know what? That's where the extra liquid came in. They ran to the sinks real quick. Aha. Okay. So scratch what I was talking about, 16 kilograms per flush. It's 16 kilograms per flush and wash and sink. So it's 16 kilograms per flush and sink because you actually run both of those together so we just combine that actually if i take a look at the sink it doesn't tell you how much it uses okay okay so here's the liquid pipe it's moving up it's up to 49 degrees celsius there Oop, and now it just got pulled in okay what am i doing here this is not right that liquid no that liquid bridge will work just fine but it would work better if i had brought it in down here because what it's doing is as i'm building up more and more water into this loop it's starting to back up further and further down here. So, yeah, there might be a reason actually, like, have a temporary uh, temporary valve that you run to prime this loop to begin with. Because you can see the amount of heat I'm getting over there. It's, it's a little bit warmer. All right, so let's take a look here. What would it take to get a radiant pipe? Oh, you know what? Jeez, Brathgar. Radiant pipes are right there with heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Dude, I should have seen that. All right, this is going to get way better. Oh, steel's our only option once again. All right, so fine. We're just going to go with the iron. Well, that's going to work way better. Look, watch this. Boom. See ya. Set that to 25 degrees. All right, so that, that thermoregulator is running quite a lot. But then again, so are these electrolyzers. I mean, they are just smashing out the oxygen. <laughs> so that's 35 degrees. That's still not cold enough. It's significantly better than nothing at all, which is, look at that, 71 degrees over there now. Yeah, you guys got to flip your poo. All right. I'm not down for that. There you go, Jacob. All right, so I'm going to accelerate this a bunch here, see what happens over a longer period of time. Let's see here, from the automation signal, okay, you can see that this thing's still flicking on and off, so driving this a little bit lower might be a better idea. So we're gonna go down to 15 degrees, 
And what I want to make sure is I don't have too much heat over here on the left. You can see I am... Uh, it's getting hot. Starting to get concerned about how much heat I have. Oh! Ha! Ran out of water! That's why. Okay, so you can see I'm now feeding this with some cold water at 9 degrees Celsius. You can see the heat is still fairly significant over here on the right. We're talking 68 degrees Celsius. Whew. Maintaining a temperature of about 30 C over here, though. That's like, it's not that great. However, now that this thing ran, we had that morning shower. That actually dropped quite a bit of heat off. I want to see where this ends up. So keep an eye on this. This is at 87 degrees Celsius. Obviously, the more dupes you'd have, the more you'd be cycling this water. And I haven't completely filled up the loop yet, so that should just continue to get better and better. So see, more came in, and that should drop the temperature a little bit. Yeah, you can see it. it's dropping it. I'm going to do a little something over here, because I don't think that's running far enough. So I'm going to add a couple more rows of uh, gas, just to kind of spread that out a little bit more. The oxygen over here is really flowing fast. <laughs> um, okay, so by doing that, I was able to bring the temperature of that oxygen down a little bit. So we're at 28 degrees Celsius. That's not bad. So by adding that extra row there, um, this hydrogen can really only ever get so cold. So the amount of oxygen that's flowing past this must be pretty serious. You can see it's just not... It's running at its maximum capacity. So that's at 24 degrees Celsius is the current temperature of the hydrogen that's flowing through there. And you can see the outlet temperature of the oxygen when just running max out with a couple of these side by side. That's 28 degrees Celsius. So if we were to disable just one of these and kind of reduce the amount of oxygen that's moving past this, you can see the temperature is coming down. So we're down to 26. 25 and I think what we'll start to see is this thing's going to start to flicker because it can actually keep up see that yeah it's getting closer 17 15 there we go so now it's flicking on and off so to give you some sort of idea of how fast this electrolyzer is running well you know what here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna disable everything and we'll see how much oxygen we actually produce in the day all right so this has been running for a couple cycles now and everything's kind of stabled out we're just running the one electrolyzer over here on the right but you can see from the reports just how much oxygen we're actually producing here so it's 523 kilograms per day and you can see the amount of that we're actually consuming I have four duplicates ones off screen but it's right around 60 kilograms of oxygen per duplicate if they're breathing the entire day. If they hold their breath a little bit, kind of like Jacob does down here every once in a while, it's actually going to be less. Not to mention he also has a buff, which is diver's lungs. So that can kind of reduce. Essentially, this thing running max out will easily support eight duplicates, potentially nine, uh, depending on what kind of buffs and whatnot are going on there. But essentially, we're making a lot more oxygen than we would be consuming. However, the temperatures that we're running over here on the right, this is coming out at 21 degrees Celsius, so it's at a very nice temperature, and this does turn off every once in a while, so we're not at the maximum capacity of our thermal regulator, which we've already kind of done some numbers to figure out just how much we're able to remove through a thermal regulator by, by doing the math. Oh, buddy, it's time for some Google Docs. All right, so for my previous video where we were actually... Um, making liquid oxygen using a thermoregulator, we answered a question here, which was how much heat can a thermoregulator transfer from one loop to another, or from one spot to another? And that is 33,600 DTUs per second. So I know that I am transferring a little bit less than that currently. Here's the other thing I know, is that the temperature that I'm running in the loop here is kind of interesting. Uh, so. We, the temperature that comes out of the water sieve is 40 degrees. You can see that right there. It's 39.8, okay, if we wanted to be real specific. And the temperature that it's running back into the toilets is right around 80 degrees Celsius. So you can see that's 79, 79, 80, 80, and it's really evened out at that point. So the temperature of the hydrogen next to this thermal regulator is stabilized at 80 degrees Celsius. So what we should see if we do, if we figure out... Oh, if I knew how much the thermal regulator was running, okay, I could figure that out by power, right? What I should see is that the DTUs in and the DTUs out are the same. Ooh. Yeah. This is pretty ambitious for 11.50 p.m. <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Okay, so. Reports. 
So if I take a look at the reports yesterday, power usage. All right, so in this last cycle, I used 118.6 kilojoules. That thing runs at 240 watts. So that is this equals that times 1,000 divided by 240 will give me seconds, which is 494. So that's time. And there's 600 seconds in a cycle because I just know that. So if I take that number and I multiply that by the DTUs that I am transferring, what do I get? 16,604,000 DTUs. Or 16.6 megadu thermal units. <laughs> All right, so now if I take a look at the liquid, oh, it's actually kind of going down in temperature. That's, that's annoying, whatever. 39.7 is what we're going in at. So what that means, 39.7 equals 39.7 times uh, the specific heat capacity of water. And that is 4.1. Mean. Oh, yeah. I love it when my numbers work out, even though I kind of knew it was going to work out. That shouldn't be a real surprise to anybody. Wait a minute, what did I do wrong? 1,604,000, but that's per kilogram. Oh no, and I'm using 30 kilograms per cycle per day because we know that we got some showers and we got some flushes and we got a little bit of sinkage. So that should be that times 30. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I shouldn't be doing math this late. Okay, so I guess the question is how much water am I really moving through and what is being kicked out? That's what it is. That's what I don't know. I don't know how much water I'm actually running through. So if I just get rid of all of these crazy multipliers. Yeah, there we go. It means the total DTU... Deleted per gram is 160, but the total DTU is actually used. So what I need to know is how much of this runs out. Ah, see? All right, so let's watch for a cycle here and I'll count up how much is actually being. So all of that went in because it's a shower. There's no bonus liquid. Aha, here it comes, the big flush. Ha, that's 20 kilograms. Wow, a bonus water every day. That's a little food poisoning. So if I'm right, when we run the shower here, that was 38 kilograms of water. Oh, per shower, per flush. There it is. I divided by three. Psh, psh. Ha! That was my problem. So the total liquid that I'm actually processing here is 30, 60. So I'm actually running 70 kilograms of water per day, and 20 of that is being kicked out. 70,000. And it's only 11 million duplicate thermal units. But what if that isn't actually kicking out, but it's all running through? Well, then it's 14 million. So shouldn't it be heating up? I'm removing less heat than I'm putting in. And yet it doesn't care. <laughs> ah. All right, well, I can't necessarily explain exactly what's going on. It's a little bit too late for me to continue down this little math problem. But I know that I'm moving a fair amount of duplicate thermal units from over here to get the air temperature down to where it needs to be and moving that into the water, running it through the bathroom and then deleting it inside of the water sieve. However, it seems like I'm deleting less than the energy I'm putting in. But when you look at the pipes, it's pretty clear to see that this is going in at 40 degrees Celsius and now it's coming out at an even colder temperature. So it's actually dropping in temperature as it continues to process more and more water. 
And the benefit is that I get 20 kilograms per cycle of extra water out of the thing. So yeah, we're essentially flushing heat down the drain. How about that? That's pretty cool. I think one last thing is that we just need to go ahead and run this other electrolyzer real quick just to see what happens um, to this unit over here on the left to see if it is possible to overpower it if it's just running 100% of the time. It could be that my math is a little bit off on the thermal regulator because it's cycling on and off a little bit. So let me just take a look at the last couple of cycles here. 118.5, 115.3, 115.4, 115.5, 115.4. Oops, what? 115 gets us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> um, I'm too tired to figure it out. Mm. Okay, so by running two electrolyzers, I get 100% here. That does overpower my ability to cool it down. Although it is still at a fairly reasonable temperature. We're at 27 degrees. That's a lot better than when you start running these all by themselves, which, I mean, you can see that. That's 60 some degrees, super hot. Even when it is fed from a nice cold water temperature. Aha! You know what? I think where some of the DTUs are going, I think they're going maybe into these insulated tiles a little bit because they're slowly warming up. They're slowly warming up. So that might be... That might be where my difference is between this number, 16 mega dupes, compared to 14.5 mega dupes. So as we can see here, by running that thermal regulator 100% now, all that's done is raise the outlet temperature a little bit. So instead of from 70 something something, it's now 83 something. It's just making up for that difference in temperature. So that's working out pretty good. One other arrangement you might be able to use here is use um, take the outlet from your water sieve, run it through a thermal aqua tuner, and then run the cold pipe into your electrolyzers like I'm doing over here at a cold temperature to pre-cool the air that's running past it. So you can see how this is working here. Oh, that's a, that's a vacuum. Maximum gas. What have you done? What have you done, electrolyzer? What? How did you get the liquid there? Oh, and I deconstructed the pipes. Okay, so what I was saying <laughs> over here is you see how the, the temperature that's running past a cold pipe that's running into the electrolyzer is kind of pre-cooling the oxygen that's coming out. So there's more than one way we can do this, but I think that arrangement would be a little bit different. So that might be worth looking into. I think I might try setting one of those up. But that's going to have to happen in another episode. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. If I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Once again, thank you to everybody that's been subscribing recently. And a big thanks to my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. Stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brathgar. Out.